Bastards, today I want to talk about body armor and what are the uses for a prepper. Whether the question you why should you buy should you buy some body armor? When do you when would you wear it? Or uh, what are the negative and the positive sides? So that's what I'm going to talk about in the sense of a prepper situation. So body armor. Um, What's the point of a body armor? This is actually one of these great myths that uh, only people that people who worked with a real body armor will will think about. Uh, a body armor is just to survive the first impact. Nothing, nothing more, unless it's uh, like one of those uh, high standard military body armor and small calibers. Then you can take mul multiple rounds. But that's a big risk. Uh, body armor is just so you can survive the first encounter, the first shot that is fired, so you can have time and you are in physique shape to return fire. So that's the point of body armor. Uh, the next point is uh, it's what's the tactical uh, benefit of body armor? Well, like I told you, you survive the first shot and you can respond with returning fire. But in a tactical situation, Body armor, it can be a good thing and a bad thing. What do I mean by that? Well, body armor is heavy. It's bulky. It restricts some of your movements. So when you are planning to go into a firefight where, where, where things are going fast, it's probably better to use lighter body armor so you have more mobility, you can be quicker. Because that's one of the problems for people that wear body armor. It slows them down. And ironically, it makes them more of a target because they're slower, they move slower, they are less agile. So the shooter has more time to aim at the same target. So that's something you need to consider when uh, buying body armor. Next thing is confidence. Because uh, yet again, this is ironic because many people who wear body armor think they have the feeling of protection. So what happens next? They take more risk because they think, oh, I'm protected. Uh, I, will I can survive this. But the problem is, the more risk and chance you take, the more chance you get to get hit in a, to get hit in a vital place that will incapacitate you. Or you get more, you get more hits, so you have more chances that the body armor will be uh, penetrated in a weaker area or by a caliber which uh, is higher than it's meant for. So those are just some of the myths and things you got to consider when taking body armor. Well, body armor. Uh, I have here three kinds of body armor that I personally considered uh, to take home for my uh, preparedness. Uh, Things is, each of these have a specific, uh, how do you say this, uh, situation to be used in. We'll go from small to, to big, just to show you the technical applications of this body armor. I know uh, what I'm about to show now, will many people will find it unnecessarily stupid even, but it's something that might save your life in a, in a crisis situation. So. Uh, imagine you're at the office, you're just working, and suddenly you hear gunshots. You hear, hear people screaming. You, you know there is an active shooter, like a spree killer or, or a criminal, I don't know. But there is something going on with gunshots. What do you do? Well, um, you can either choose to wear nothing, so you can be more agile, you can run away faster, you can hide in small spaces so the shooter won't, won't see you or you can crawl through uh, better through a, uh, a window or from a higher floor without the extra weight that might break your knees when you're falling down but at least you're out of sight and range from the active shooter. So, um, when you're at the office, just two books and some duct tape. Lies in every office. You can use magazines or 
or some other or some thick uh, pack of paper from the photocopier machine. It might sound stupid, but when you think you do not, you cannot run away because the shooter is in a is in the one of the hallways, so you might not uh, be agile of have the place to run, to uh, to dodge or cross the line of sight of the active shooter. You can use books. It will can be made in. I guess 30 seconds I will show you in a crisis situation how you can do this. Oh, you hear the gunshots, you take tape. There, and this will, uh, I put it a little bit lower, that's a mistake of me, so now this area is exposed, but most of my vital organs are now kind of protected against small arm ammunition, so I'm still agile enough, I can bend, I can turn, I can spring, but when you're in a small hallway, and somebody shooting you and you have to run away you are able to protect against small calibers some of your vital organs it may be not much but every bullet that will not hit your body is a bullet that will not kill you or perhaps not uh, directly kill you the the reason i put this on my back and especially a little bit higher is because when you run away from a shooter he will shoot you in the back especially one of those pre-killers or active shooter so, this is an area that most shooters are trained to aim at and take it at the center, aim at the center of the body mass. So, center body mass uh, is kind of protected, their higher calibers will penetrate these, there's no question about it. But, it can give you a chance to take the first shots and run away uh, with as less damage as possible you can. So, Oh, wait. One book. Two books. So that's just an improvised body armor you can make at the like a makeshift at the office in case there are small hallways, little room to run away. Um, but if you have to run away without body armor, try to stay low, try to go from cover to cover, try to move uh, side, always sideways, so the shooter has an other way to keep you in the line of sights for accurate shots. So that's the uh, uh, first thing about uh, body armor, you can improvise yourself, you can use at home metal plates or something else, everything that will slow down the bullets uh, will save uh, from deeper penetration that could be lethal. So, uh, next thing. Uh, this is uh, body armor with uh, this is just ceramic, ceramic plates. Like you can hear, these are some uh, ceramic, ceramic plates. You can put this, you can use this for like home protection. Like when there is a burglar, you can put this under your bed or in the closet and you can take it and just put it on like that just a little bit so and your upper body is protected against uh, even higher calibers calibers uh, don't forget this is ceramic plate it will break easily uh, which means you can take this can take uh, uh, the de de can, how do you say this? This can stop or uh, slow down the shot of a 0.308, which is like, let's say, a caliber like this from a high-powered rifle. But it will only take stop one shot. But 
is that one shot, perhaps from a bolt rifle or from inaccurate fire from a long range, that will save your life, that it will not penetrate you in a vital organ and you will live for another day. Uh, what's handy about this is it gives it slight, more lightweight, it, uh, it has some cutting so you can move very good. I can jump with it, no problem, it's good in its place. And another thing is when you have to go to the, to the market or shop in a situation where there is more criminality like uh, when finan in financial problems, when there is more criminal, criminals on the rise, uh, like gangs in your area or something else, it can, might be handy to wear something like this. But don't wear it uh, just like this in the open, because it will attract attention. Bad guys, police will think you're up to no good and they will target you uh, privately because they think you're something planning. So. You should wear something like this under your clothing. That's why I like this uh, too, because I can just put it under my uh, jacket. The zipper is kind of stuck. So, it's uh, harder to detect. Yeah, you may look a little bit blocky, but if, you, if I walk down the street, not many people will directly see that I wear body armor right now. I can go to the shop without drawing attention and in case of a criminal a robbery I have a chance to get I have more chance to get out of it alive from because a robber and a criminal they will shoot from close range so you can survive the first shots from even close range with perhaps a higher, higher caliber pistol like uh, just a 9mm or something so that's a way to, that's a way why I like this kind of body armor. It's less, it's weightless, gives you more mobility. It's tactical, like I said with the jacket. So, uh, but uh, what I must warn you, if you buy one of these ceramic uh, body armor, don't let it drop on the floor because it can stop a bullet, like I said with the first time, but if you drop it on the ground, it will be brittle and break. So. Even if you drop it and it doesn't break, it will have uh, make some tears in the fabric of the uh, ceramic plate. So be careful for that. Yep. So uh, the last type of body armor uh, I would uh, buy myself, like I did, is one of these uh, flag jackets. Uh, you, like you can see, this is a bigger type of body armor. Uh, it's flag jacket, which means it will give you more protection, but it's heavier. Uh, and this one is more like for uh, protection of an area. If you, have, if you have to guard your neighborhood, your house or some family, and you might expect some surprise attack, this can be handy. It weighs a lot. It will slow you very down. So this is more a defensive. Uh, armor. I will put it now on. So, like you can see, it gives overall more protection. Uh, you can buy this uh, body armor in just Kevlar and it will stop uh, things like what it's meant to. Read the instruction of the body armor and the cover you buy. It usually it's around nine mm and how Kevlar works is it will how do you say this? It will work like a net. Like you have a net, a bullet comes flies through, and the bullet will be pushed in and slowed down by all the netting of Kevlar's and the wires. So it will catch on. You will get a bruise, and in the worst case. If it's a higher caliber, you will get uh, how do you say this? Internal bleedings because of the the smack. You will survive because it's not penetrated. But just always go to the hospital or a doctor, or medic, professional medicals uh, for the inter possible internal bleeding that you don't really notice after the impact.
So that's something to be careful about if you buy one of these body armors with only Kevlar in it. Um, this type of body armor uh, I have fitted with metal plates. Like you can see, uh, this all under it is filled with Kevlar and the general uh, area, the center of mass, is protected with an extra, an extra layer protection of metal plates. The same is here in the back, two metal plates for when you get shot in the back. It will hurt like hell and it's not always a guarantee because at a cert, at, if it's at a certain angle, a certain type of ammo, ammunition, it will, can still penetrate the uh, metal. But the point of the metal is the bullet flies against it, it gets a little bit squashed and by the time it's reached the Kevlar, it has more stopped, slowed down and spread it more mass so it can be it can be more catch like the nets I told you about. Um, another uh, advantage uh, of this body armor is it has uh, more protection, like you can see. These two flaps are the Kevlar. So why are these things? Well, it's not for when you get shot in the neck. It's about where when you get shot on a metal plate and when you get bullets with iron or lead or, or other metals, by the force it reaches your metal plate, it will start to spatter. And you don't want high velocity little pieces of splinters and metal going into your face. So that's a way that it will be catch or deflected off. So all the metal splatters won't re all reach your face and cut down your the veins on other muscles in your neck. So that's why uh, you have this uh, spalling uh, around your neck. Uh, another example is the groin, the groin blade, because you want to have children after after you face a gunman. So that's also handy. The same thing applies when you're uh, bending over. You get shot, spalling, and you don't want to get the arteries in your inner thigh cut by splinters or other metals. So. Uh, that's the heavier type of body armor. Uh, it has also some uh, flag, uh, Kevlar in the shoulders. This will not stop most bullets, uh, early higher, higher caliber bullets, but overall it will give you more protection in war, uh, war times. What do I mean by that? When you live in a conflict area and, you, and there are bombardments, you can wear this to be more safe for splinters from uh, when the bomb go ne goes near. Because even when you're like 200 meters from a bomb exp explosion, metal splinters, pieces of rocks and other debris can still fly at speeds of sounds uh, around and will hit something vital or cut muscles, uh, nerves, which can be very dangerous. So the more protection, this is more like for stationary. If you want to help people in a conflict area, like give medical care, bring transport foods or goods, this might be good to wear. But be very careful when the conflict has perhaps soldiers or other combatants in your area, because if you wear this and they see you, they think you're a combatant. So think very carefully when you wear this in wartime. Uh, if it's that's the case, I would suggest to let to wear something that to let people know that you're not a threat, that you just try to protect yourself. Like you can wear a, uh, you can paint it in a colorful thing like blue or white, uh, or wear a red cross on your shoulder. So combatants will know he's not a fighting uh, combatant. He's here for uh, um, for uh, giving help to others. So he's not a threat to off. So we will not uh, target him or shoot at him. Uh, it's not always the case, but it gives you more chances to survive that. So, uh, let's set up flag vest. Uh, prices can range from dependent on the quality, the level of protection. Uh, so, that's something to consider when you're uh, making a, a buying some of this armor. Uh, another thing is a uh, mistake that most people make is they buy body armor from surplus uh, stores or second-hand body armor, but that's kind of dangerous. Why? It's like a used car. It might have some 
little damage that can increase the chance of uh, an accident. So if you buy Kevlar that is like perhaps more than five years old, it can be get more wear out, uh, can have some tears from the sweat that and the moist that uh, has built up during the years, uh, it made the material in the Kevlar uh, weaker, or perhaps it's been bad, it had some bad maintenance, or uh, it has been shot for a test and people will uh, sell them. So the net that I'm talking about is already woven, uh, wrecked out. So that's something you always need to be careful about when buying second uh, hand armor, body armor, or buying from surplus sh stores because if the army would be 100% sure that it would be uh, kind, uh, would uh, have a higher chance of saving their soldiers, they would keep it. So keep that in mind when buying body armor. Uh, another point is uh, when you buy body armor, uh, not only feel you protected, uh, but learn about ammunition. What do I mean by that? There are several types of ammo uh, that possibly could be dangerous, like uh, military ammo can have pen, uh, can have a uh, like a copper hat or a metal full metal jacket hat like they called so they have deeper penetration higher calibers from certain uh, weapons that uh, that the military can use or criminals um, a shotgun shell from close range can penetrate even uh, good armor so that's something to be careful about I will show you some uh, calibers. Uh, the reason uh, I have body armor is uh, that it's more lighter, uh, like the one I showed, the tactical one, is because I live in Belgium, and in Belgium the most caliber used is this. Uh, if you can see it, it's a .22. It's a light caliber for sporting, uh, sporting rifles and pistols. So it's not like how do I say this? It's not a big caliber. It's a fast caliber that can penetrate uh, at high velo velocity, but usually it's made out of soft metal uh, like lead, so it can be easily stopped with simple body armor. So that's why I don't have the, hmm, I would call it Navy SEAL body armor to say like the body armor like 4,000 euros or something or even more. So these are the very cheap ones, but they're effective against the uh, calibers I would expect to encounter when shit hit the fan here right in Belgium. So, uh, another thing that in Belgium would be more probably is uh, shotgun shells. Uh, slugs, uh, uh, what's the difference? Uh, shotgun shells are like all these little balls that, uh, that are get shot like bird shots and those will not penetrate body armor from a longer distance but if they're shooting at like 5 meters point, point, point range, it will penetrate uh, even the, the better armor. Why? Because all the Kevlar will be penetrated around the same time, so the net will be divided, and so more power can penetrate the body armor, uh, there's more chance of it. So, uh, I'm not afraid for slugs, because Slugs are more used for hunting big game and in Belgium there is not a lot of hunters that can hunt big game so I'm not too worried about that but farmers or uh, just regular hunters that hunt pheasants in the area will have uh, bird shots. So that's handy for when you can run away uh, from a longer distance. So that's the thing I'm prepared for. Uh, What's probably less common, but something to, to think about is the 9mm is also uh, often used uh, for a uh, particular, particular uh, how do you say this, like private owners of uh, firearms. So uh, the 9mm, like you can see, is, a, is something that the police would use. But there can be uh, several differences in the type of ammunition that can affect your body armor. So that's something to keep in mind. First, you have just the round tip, uh, which is standard for most uh, pistol ammo. So this could be uh, held by the regular Kevlar or the, of the plate carrier. But a problem starts to arise when, they, when somebody will start to use uh, metal jackets or hardened tips. 
so it will have more penetrative power so that could be a problem so think about that when you when you think from oh he only has a pistol no he can probably he for special uh, fighting conditions he probably has some of these uh, metal tips um, what's very da dangerous about uh, body armor is when they start to use uh, hollow tips as you can see this what is a hollow tip a hollow tip is like a cone when it smacks its target the an extra uh, cone starts to go from inside outside out and will penetrate after the initial dead lights the net catches this and it's like a knife that will follow through and will uh, probably penetrate highly uh, probably penetrate the armor and hit you in a vital organ in the center of your body so that I don't say it's always the case, but it's something to consider when you're uh, thinking about body armor. Uh, like like higher caliber rifles, like hunting rifles, like the 30, uh, 30, 30 like you can see, is a bigger caliber that probably that could uh, be used in Belgium in shit hit the uh, fan situation, but you will likely less encounter one of these. And in uh, wartime, just for shits and giggles, the .50 BMG is a big caliber. These are used against armor of vehicles, so when you see somebody who has a rifle or a machine gun with this caliber, just hide. Hide and run as fast as you can, because this will penetrate almost everything you can put between you and against you. So hide behind uh, thick walls, hide in ditches. So they just won't hit you. Just for shits and giggles, i uh, show this. Uh, like I said, uh, military will often use uh, uh, higher caliber rifles. Uh, NATO will use uh, smaller uh, calibers, but they are faster. So there's more danger of spalling because of the smaller uh, weight that uh, bullets have. So it's more chance for it will metal splinters around your face or other areas. So something to consider uh, when we're talking about uh, things like military rifles in like the AK-47 or something else we are high caliber rifles we have like this these are often with uh, metal or copper tips so these give a more punch so those are you should always have to metal plates when these things are around so the you have more chance to survive uh, that's uh, about it uh, so learn about the calibers, learn about the uh, type of rifles, what kind of ammunition the shooter probably would use. Uh, another thing about uh, body armor is, uh, like I said, no rifle, just a little tip. When uh, you have uh, somebody with a pistol coming into your office and start to shoot people, many people think, ah, I don't need body armor, I can take him down while he's reloading. Uh, that's just a movie fantasy. It's it's something that rarely happens, and when it happens, it's uh, it's happens a lot that the shooter can uh, withdraw his weapon or or fight him off and still grab the weapon. So it's a life of death situation that you need to think about in a the moment. There is no certain thing you can say. Oh, you should do this this step, this step, this step. It's all about the moment, luck, and taking the moment, making the right decision, run away, fight, hide, or uh, run. It's something you need to think about, to train about, uh, about high level stress situations like a gunfight. Uh, because, like I said, you can. it's hard to uh, overmaster somebody who has a gun. That's why they use guns everywhere. Imagine the shooter uh, oh, is uh, empty, don't worry. I checked it twice to see if it's empty, so uh, it's safe to handle it now in my in my home. So the shooter, oh, you can see that the gun, that the pistol is empty because the slide stands uh, behind. It's it's going behind. So the shooter, in the time you hear click empty. And he can already shoot again. In that time, you have to run um, towards the the shooter and uh, over uh, try to overmaster him, grab his by his gun. But like you can see, that's a really small time, small amount of time to 
overmaster him. That's only when you can surprise him, like behind the door or a wall, or that you know that you cannot run away and you have to make a last stand. So always run away from a shooter. That's what I'm trying to say. If you get a chance, hide or run, because a shooter is always an advantage. So uh, we think about that. Uh, with the revolver, uh, like a wait, another point is a pistol has more rounds in it. So imagine that when he's reloaded, he has probably between 10 to 15 bullets. He can pow, 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 pow in that sequence, shoot at you. So always try to run away, to, uh, try to uh, move, uh, not in a straight line, but move from side to side. So it's harder to for the shooter to keep. Uh, even a trained shooter will have difficulty to accurately hit a target on that. So, um, just don't want to show you, it's empty. Uh, with a revolver, when you have an active shooter, it's the advantage for, for the victim is he has only six to perhaps seven, eight bullets at a time and have to reload a long time. So, uh, a person with a revolver is probably easier to overmaster when he's trying to. When, to, unless he has a speed loader, which is much quicker, but still slower than a pistol. So that's a, probably a, a more chance to overmaster him when you have the chance. So uh, another thing is uh, when you have uh, somebody at point, point blank with a revolver, how do you know when his ammo is running out? Uh, it's hard in a fast situation, but when the shooter is a little bit cocky and he tries to Oh, uh, look at, how uh, do you say it, tries to intimidate or have some sadistic pleasure or something, I don't know, could happen. You can see uh, in the sights if there's still shot ammo, shot ammo or full ammo in it. So that could be in a split second a lifesaver to overmaster him when he's a little bit cocky. So um, that's another point uh, I wanted to make about the body armor and ranting about this topic. So uh, this might take on body armor for preppers. Uh, I hope you learned something about this video. I hope if it will make you think about uh, outside of the box about uh, the difference between Hollywood movies and real life situations. Look it up. Look, bio look up about biographies of policemen, about military and their personal experience with body armor. Ask a professional, ask somebody who has experience with body armor about what works, what doesn't work, what is real, what is movie, what is myth, uh, what do I, sh I need to be careful about. Go deeper into the subject because yeah, it's just body armor, but it has a lot of depth in several situations and technicalities. Uh, uh, I hope you enjoyed it, learn something from it. Uh, and I hope it will keep you safe in the future when you think about your home preparedness. So thank you for watching. Uh, see you the next time. React, subscribe and all that things that YouTubers say. So thank you for watching. See you next time.